sorry. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to our Pelican Talk. The Office of Graduate Studies and Research and MARCOM, which is our marketing, recruiting and communication arm of the UWI, welcomes you to the Pelican Talk. I'm Professor Marcia Roy and I'm the Director for Graduate Studies and Research at MONA and I'll be your host for this evening. UWI is the number one ranked university in the Caribbean. And here at Mona, we have students who are registered in 270 graduate programs, and we have 971 graduate courses. This means that there is a graduate program or a graduate course with your name on it, and we want to make all of you UWI telecoms. Online, we have faculty members and administrators who are here to answer any of your questions and concerns. We also have the Assistant Registrar of the Office of Graduate Studies and Research, Ms. Georgia Bennett, and her team of graduate reps who are here to assist you. Please place your questions or concerns in the chat and the team will respond to you in real time. This evening, you will hear Five minute presentations from the faculties of Humanities and Education, the Institute for Gender and Development Studies, the Faculty of Law, and the Faculty of Social Sciences, followed by short testimonials from graduate students from each faculty. You will hear a short presentation from the SLB, the Student Loan Bureau, the Credit Union, and JNND, who will help to fund your graduate dreams. With the assistance of Mr. Adain Murray from Markham and his team, we will be fielding questions later on in the evening from the audience. Please place your questions in the chat as the presentations are being made and we will try to address all of those questions. I now present to you Ms. Georgia Bennett, the Assistant Registrar in the Office of Graduate Studies and Research. We affectionately call her GB, and she's also the regulation czar. And she is going to share with you some of the essential information that you will need for your graduate application. And we'll be here to answer any questions that you might have. Ms. Bennett. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for taking the time out to attend this seminar. Oh, this session, I should say. <laughs> um, as Prof. Roy has indicated, my presentation is to provide you with um, general application information. So for person who may not know, when applying to pursue a postgraduate degree, uh, the application form is an online one. There is a video on our website, that's the Office of Graduate Studies and Research website that demonstrates how to apply. And applicants are encouraged to use this video as they'll find it very useful when applying. When you have completed filling out your application form, please remember to hit the submit button. Once you have hit that button, you'll receive an automated response in your email. And that response will provide you with 
information and instructions regarding supporting documents that are required to complete your application form. So if you don't get the, re the response in your e inbox, you will receive it in your junk mail. So just check both sections. Supporting documents can be submitted to our office via email at postgrad at uwimona.edu.jm. On the homepage of our website, there's a section marked prospective students. And below that, there's a link that, that is marked standard supporting documents for applications. That link connects you to the complete list of supporting documents that are required to complete your application form. So once you hit on that link, you'll see a table looking like this. And what this table is saying is that all applicants must submit two academic referees reports on the prescribed form. Now your academic referees are lecturer who, lecturers who taught you at the tertiary level and the prescribed forms are the ones indicated above. Now the doctor of medicine form is the form that is used by medical doctors who are applying to one of our clinical programs. So if you're not a medical doctor applying to one of our clinical programs, you're required to use the form that is under the link mark regular. You download the form and hand it to your referees. The table is also saying that all non-UWI graduates must ask their degree granting institution to submit to our office a copy of their transcript. And all non uwi graduates are to submit a copy of their birth certificate also. Marriage certificate is only if it's relevant and um, all applicants must submit a copy of their resume. Now this table shows additional supporting documents that are required to complete the application form. And you notice that in this table, it is program specific. So if you're applying for the MSc Applied Psychology, MSc Clinical Psychology, Master of Public Health, Master of Social Work, you're required to submit a statement of intent. If you're applying to one of our nursing programs, you'll be required to submit a copy of your nursing portfolio. MSc Sports Medicine, MSc Physiotherapy, you are required to submit a copy of your license to practice. And all MPhil and PhD applicants must submit a copy of their research proposal. So after, you, after all your supporting documents are received by our office, your application will be reviewed by the respective department and faculty, after which a formal response will be sent to you regarding the outcome of your um, application. If you have received an offer in the body of the letter, there is a link that you must click on to indicate whether you're accepting or rejecting the offer. Please pay attention to the deadline date as the link has an expiration date. If the link has expired and you wish to accept your offer, not a problem. All you'll be required to do is to send, send us an email. That's the Office of Graduate Studies and Research giving us permission to accept your offer on your behalf. It is important to note that failure to follow one of the above mentioned steps will result in you not being able to register for your courses when the time comes. Now we're going to move on to specially admitted students. Who qualifies to be a specially admitted student? Persons sponsored by the governments or other employers to read certain courses, not for credit towards a certain, to, towards a university qualification. Any individual who wishes to pursue and develop a particular area of intellectual interest, graduates of the UWI, or other approved universities who wish to pursue a particular course or courses. It is important to note that the UWI accepts applicants without a first degree to pursue a postgraduate studies 
to pursue postgraduate studies. Other criteria are taken into consideration, such as your work experience, maturity, evidence of previous studies. So if you had completed a certificate program or a diploma program, we'll need a copy of your transcript. Some departments may call you into an interview. So in some case, persons without a first degree are accepted as a special admitted student in the first instance, where they are given two to three first year graduate courses to test drive. In other cases, depending on the program, they are accepted directly into a master's program without going through the special admission route. Courses successfully completed as a specially admitted student, the credits may be used towards a master's degree. So for example, if you applied for the MA Cultural Studies program and the department recommended that you pursue the first semester as a specially admitted student, if you're successful in those courses, those courses, the department may recommend that you be given a firm offer into the program. Once you're in receipt of that firm offer, you can write to the Office of Graduate Studies and Research requesting that the courses that you successfully completed as a specially admitted student, that the credits be used towards your Master of Cultural Studies degree. Um, my final slide is just to bring to your attention our office hours, where we work from Mondays to Fridays, 8.30 to 4.30, our contact numbers are there, and also you can get us by WhatsApp. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Bennett. So we're going to have the first presentation by the faculty and Ms. Bennett will be with us later to answer any questions that you might have. So we're going to start with the Faculty of Humanities and Education and Dr. Carmen Roof is going to make presentation on behalf of her faculty and she's the Associate Dean for Graduate Studies and Research in that faculty, Carmel. Maria Mike is off. Carmel, we are not hearing you. Thank you. Good evening. Yes, my microphone was muted for a little while. Thank you, Professor Roy. Um, I hope you can all hear me now or see me now as well. Good evening. I am Dr. Roof, Carmel Roof from the Faculty of Humanities and Education. One of the things that we'd like to say is that our faculty is your place to shine. You would have seen on the slide here, this is a snapshot of the front space in front of our faculty. So if you have not yet applied, this is your opportunity to apply to us. We have programs for every single person. We have taught master's degrees and research degrees, and we also have a doctorate in education. We offer a number of our programs in three different modalities. We do face-to-face, -face, blended, and online. And here I'll just share a few of them. We have a master's of arts in archives and records management, library and information studies, cultural studies, heritage studies, history, philosophy, theology. If you go to communication, um, we go to communication for social and behavior change, um, English language, linguistics, literatures in English, integrated marketing, communication, media management, translation, especially for those who are interested in different languages. We offer programs that you can participate in. We also have a Master of Arts in Higher Educational Management, Leadership in Technical Vocational Education and Training and Workforce Development, Teacher Education and Teacher Development. For those persons who are not trained teachers, we offer a program that suits you as well, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. 
for our face-to-face -face programs. If you can see on the slide, these are some of the programs that we offer face-to-face, -face, curriculum and instruction, early childhood, language education, literacy studies, educational leadership and management. And you would have noticed with some of these names, we're on the cutting edge, educational measurement, educational psychology, mathematics, education, science education. We have a very cutting edge program that you know, is really responsive to what's happening in the global space, education for sustainable development, global citizenship and peace. And those are face to face. And we have some of those programs being offered in our online modality. And you can pursue these in blended modalities or what we call summer and online, meaning some component is done in the summer um, and you do the others throughout um, online. So again, educational leadership and management, that's a flagship program, quite attractive. You don't necessarily have to be literally in education, working in education to pursue all our programs. Some of them are so specific, but others are available. Inclusive and special education is another program that's quite responsive. And again, we have this online. Earlier I mentioned that we have programs where we look at those persons who are not yet teacher trained. So if you have a first degree in a particular area and you happen to be working in a school or you're teaching or in training, we can offer teaching certification for you. So on the slide, you're seeing some of those, but contact us and we may have an option for you. If you are um, not, teaching in, 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 in the classroom, but you are interested in pursuing a teaching degree and um, you have a first degree, we also have a program for you. You simply need to contact us. So we have our postgraduate diploma in education and we have what we call the masters of arts um, in teaching. We have our research degrees, as I mentioned earlier. So we have our master of philosophy for those persons who want to pursue an MPhil, where the emphasis here is on research and you can upgrade from the MPhil to the doctor of philosophy. So again, we have communication studies, literatures, uh, modern languages, linguistics, um, cultural studies, history, philosophy, theology. We have two professional doctorates. You'll notice I highlight them on the slide. It's a doctor of education, educational planning and social development, and a doctor of ministry offered by the UTCWI. So if you are interested again in any of those, feel free to reach out to us or email contact fhe at uwimona.edu.jm, or you can telephone us 876-977-3659. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or on our website. So any of those social media handles you may use at FHE Uimona. And we have connectivity issues. So I'm not sure if she's back online as yet. Sandra. I'm not hearing Sandria, so that's the end of our FHE um, presentation. Thank you very much, Carmel. We will take her if she's able to connect with us, but we are going to move on. And you did it. You did it in five minutes. Good job. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to welcome Professor Diane Fox, Diana Fox, and she is the director for the Institute of Gender and Development Studies, and she's going to tell us a little bit about those programs and that uh, we'll have a student testimonial. Diana. Greetings, everybody. Let me start my slideshow from the beginning. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our institute. The IGDS, Institute for Gender and Development Studies, is a multidisciplinary institute, which was established in 1993. So we're coming up on our 30th anniversary year. The Institute is committed to exploring issues of gender, development, equity, diversity, and inclusion, 
And we have three units in addition to the regional coordinating office at the regional headquarters. One is at the Mona campus in Jamaica, another at the Nita Barrow unit in Barbados, and a third at the St. Augustine campus unit in Trinidad and Tobago. In terms of our programs offered, we have a one-year postgraduate diploma in gender and development studies. Depending if, if, you're, if you're going full-time, if you're going part-time, approximately two years, five core courses, one elective course, and participation in one research seminar. The MSc in Gender and Development Studies, similarly, if it's full-time, approximately 18 months, part-time, approximately 2.5 years. It's a research track with five core courses, one free elective, a research paper, participation in a seminar, and there's also an internship track if you're interested in getting out there and be working with organizations and agencies, five core courses, two electives, and a two to three month internship report. We also offer an MPhil and PhD degrees, three years and five years respectively if you're full time. And the program structure includes a core course to research methods courses, online research ethics graduate course, and a research workshop course. If you get online to IGDS and you can search any of the units, just Google IGDS, um, you will find our application procedures and applications are still currently open. Why do gender studies? Gender is pervasive across society and gender issues are critical to equitable and sustainable development. These days, there is no funding agency offering a project without a gender component, and it provides insight into the underlying factors that contribute to a whole host of issues, including especially gender-based violence, which unfortunately is all too high and one of the issues that we at IGDS are working assiduously to bring to an end. There are a series of career options that you can pursue with a degree in gender studies. You can become a gender analyst or a consultant for an NGO, um, for a multilateral agency. You can do policy and I'm sorry, analysis um, or an, be an advocate for policy um, for government. You can become a diversity and inclusion specialist in schools or for organizations. Increasingly, uh, institutions are hiring diversity and inclusion specialists. You can be a researcher. You can work in social work, counseling. You can be a teacher and bring all of this framework and background to all that you do in order to support your students. These are just a few, but the gender lens is, is one that you can bring into any career that you undertake. We also have quite a few funding opportunities and scholarships. The Catherine Jane Scholarship offers partial tuition to a successful MSc candidate. We also offer small travel grants to students presenting at conferences and approved study tours. We encourage our students to participate in professional conferences to gain skills of presentation and to promote and present your research. UE scholarships are also available for MPhil and PhD students, and we also offer paid internships. If you pursue graduate education with the IGDS, there are many opportunities for you to join us in our projects. We have a number of initiatives that are ongoing here. You can see some of our staff um, at a community center um, in one of the parishes. It's a UNDP, United Nations Development Program project, uh, Shiro's project on ending violence against women and girls. We also have an initiative to transform mentalities with a focus on men and masculinities. Again, gender-based violence. Um, we're increasingly working as consultants for and with indigenous peoples. We're particularly interested in gender justice and climate resilience, cutting edge and crucial issues in the region and globally, sexual harassment and workplace equity, and of course, gender and historical and contemporary perspectives. It's really exciting to learn about the ways in which our advocacy efforts 
have brought about some increasingly equitable transformations in society. We are also involved in policy initiatives and outreach. Here's a picture of our recent handbag project initiative in which we collected all kinds of women's uh, personal supplies to distribute to uh, marginalized communities and to uh, offer some um, awareness programs about opportunities for outreach and for uh, ending some of the challenging problems in the community, such as gender-based violence on Child's Day this past year. We went to the Garvey Center and instituted a self-care initiative um, for the children um, around hair care, body care, and self-love. We're also involved in policy initiatives, including the sexual harassment policy and the gender policy. And that's it. A uh, quick run through. Um, again, we are similarly on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and also we're on uh, LinkedIn. So if you want to find out more about our individual uh, members of the IGDS, please go on our website, look, at, uh, look for us on social media and reach out to us. We look forward to talking to you and bringing you into our IGDS family. Thank you. And next we have Helen Atkins, who is our postgraduate student, who is going to share with you some testimonials of her experience with the IGDS. Helen, take it away. Thank you, Professor Fox. Um, and I'm speaking to you all from a community workshop. So forget to give the backdrop, but I wanted to make the most of this opportunity to tell you that studying at the Institute of Gender and Development um, studies has been truly life-changing for me. Uh, the education, the learning, the pedagogical perspectives have been invaluable, but also the connections to networks and activism and ultimately employment. And it's been a real gateway to a whole universe of gender and development, Caribbean histori historiography, debate, advocacy, and action for social change. So to take it back, I applied to the IDDS for many reasons. The main one was I desperately needed a re-education. Um, I graduated um, at the age of 20 from the University of Cambridge in England, and it didn't really teach me anything I needed to know. So three months later, I visited Jamaica for the very first time and dreamed of living and working here. Life happened, and then 20 years on, um, a month after my 40th birthday, I showed up on campus finally as an international student and a mature student, so very much a fish out of water. And I didn't know people on the island, but no one at the university, but the IGDS lectures were a breath of fresh air. It was such a huge relief um, to suddenly hear things that resonated with me, um, to, to have lecturers who were so very patient um, with my constant need to cross-reference everything I thought I knew with all the new knowledge and different ways of thinking that I was being presented with. So it really was a very liberating experience. Early on, I switched from the MPhil to the MSc to maximize the opportunity to do an in internship. And I'd really encourage anyone, don't be afraid to change. If your course isn't really quite right, you can change. And really for me, that was when things really took off because as a visitor to the country, that vocational experience was invaluable. And I volunteered for an organization, WMW Jamaica, um, that also works to end gender-based violence. I became a member, an occasional consultant, and now I'm fully engaged with the organization, currently speaking to you from Fort Maria um, at this community workshop on the causes and consequences of GBV, gender-based violence. So I'm literally living the dream, despite the subject matter, experiencing the benefits of studying with the Institute, and not only that, um, I'm working with another IGDS alumni, Ruth Howard, and also an IGDS guest lecturer, Hilary, Hilary Nicholson. So we can see the fruits of all this studying in many different ways. And I'd like to take this opportunity to really, from, from the bottom of my heart, thank the IDDS lecturers. Some had the dubious pleasure of helping me to unravel all this understanding and knowledge, um, but I can draw a straight line from that to where I am today, which is um, manager for monitoring, evaluation, accountability, and learning, um, traveling all over the island, raising awareness for the reduction of gender-based violence. So thank you. Ah, oh, thank you, Helen. We thank you so much for your service from Cambridge to Jamaica. You're not going back. Wonderful. I love it. Next, we're going to have, so Helen, hang around. We might have some questions for you. All right. And, and, and pay attention to those people in the workshop. We're going to have a presentation from the Faculty of Law. Dr. Celia Blake is going to make that presentation. Just want to remind everybody 
staff, you if you have any questions or concerns while the presentations are going on, please put your questions or concerns in the chat and we will respond to them in real time. And later on, we're going to have a question and answer session. Take it away, Celia. Thank you so much, Professor Roy. And good evening, everyone. So you've been hearing that the University of the West Indies, now in its 75th year, is the leading tertiary institution in the Caribbean. In keeping with that theme, I want to tell you why I think the Faculty of Law at the UE Mona, Mona Law as we call ourselves, is a special place for you to do graduate studies and research in law. The first thing is that our students are engaged in exciting, cutting edge research. We have students engaged in original research on a range of areas, cyberspace law, financial crimes, including things like scamming and mo money laundering in the insurance sector. On the more public law side, we have students researching on how the notion of a right to a dignified life intersects with bauxite mining investment law. Also research on issues relating to access to justice in the context of the role of the Access to Information Tribunal. So you will join a group of students who are examining Caribbean legal problems and issues who are passionate about their research and who are developing scholarship on legal issues that matter to the Caribbean. So if you're excited by specialized research and thorough in-depth and critical investigation of a particular topic, Mona Law is the place for you. And we would welcome your application for our research degree programs, the MPhil PhD programs. We do have two, uh, a taught master's program in the form of our very versatile flagship LLM program. The UE LLM is a unique cross-campus degree with virtual regional classrooms. Our LLM program exemplifies the fact that the UE is one regional university, despite the various campuses. So the one UE LLM opens to you the offerings of the LLM courses taught on other campuses, even though you're registered here at Mona. So depending on the courses you choose, your lecturer may be attached to Mona in Jamaica, Cable in Barbados, or St. Augustine in Trinidad. And you will be part of a virtual classroom with classmates from across the Caribbean or even from beyond the Caribbean. So your horizons are expanded, both in terms of the menu of courses available to you, as well as who, you will meet as your peers and the potential networks across the Caribbean that you can plug into and develop your professional contacts for the future. Our LLM program is enriched by our special masterclass series, whereby we open our graduate classrooms to the public and pull in a wide cross section of people beyond those enrolled in our programs. These masterclasses deepen your teaching and learning experience in the faculty, since they tend to bring together legal scholars and practitioners alike into a single space for discussion and discourse on a topic that is relevant to courses that we're offering. But don't take my word for it. Go online and see for yourself how intellectually energizing our masterclasses can be. Um, so just hop onto YouTube and you can see some of the previous masterclasses that we have had. So if you're thinking about a taught master's which provides a range of options, both in public law and in corporate and commercial law, Mona Law is the place for you. And I should quickly say that if you're not ready to plunge into a master's program, but you want to whet your appetite by sampling one of our courses or a couple of our courses, we can facilitate you too under the special admission program that you heard um, Assistant Registrar Bennett speak about. Our admin assistant in the faculty is online here, ready to answer your questions about the LLM program. Or of course, you may email him at the address that is on this slide. And in a few minutes, you will hear directly from one of our LLM students why the LLM program is special and that several students enjoy it and have excelled in the program. Now, Mona Law is also a special place for you because it offers you faculty who are recognized specialists and experts in their respective fields. Tom, of course, is not going to allow me to give you a profile of all the faculty members, but I would like to mention that the faculty is led by the Dean, Professor Shazida Ali. She's the regional expert in financial crime and anti-money laundering law. And she offers a course in legal aspects of corporate misconduct. And she also supervises research students. One of our most subscribed courses in our LLM, corporate is, is in our LLM program is corporate governance 
which is led by Mrs. Susan Folks Golson. She's the regional expert in corporate governance and company law. Our faculty are researched, they are published in their respective areas of specialization, and many have engaged in technical consultations. The other thing that makes our faculty special for you is that we're accessible, we're approachable. Many of us have an open door policy and we're accessible, every one of us via email. And this extends to our administrative staff as well, who are exceptional at dealing efficiently with, with your queries and helping you to smooth out the little kinks that you may encounter with your registration and helping you to settle down into your studies. So all in all, Mona Law is the place to be for graduate studies and research in law because you will be engaged in exciting cutting edge research because we have a unique versatile LLM program designed with you in mind and because you will find here some of the best experts in your area of study. And now I would like to invite um, our LLM student, Mr. Craig Hakas, to share his testimonial of his experience with us here at Mona Law. Craig, over to you. Thanks, Celia. Uh, hello, everyone. I mean, Celia has said it all. I mean, several things that she has said, I can certainly attest to them. Uh, one of the things that really stood out to me as a student was the fact that um, our classes involved students from right across the Caribbean. And so even now, even though we might um, have ended those courses, we would have kept in touch with each other because of the WhatsApp groups that were formed and so on and so forth. So every now and again, you find that persons will, um, will tap into those groups to, to get some person in, in some jurisdiction for some assistance in some area. So that is always um, very good. Uh, certainly in relation to the content um, of the courses, I found them to be, um, of course, intellectually challenging, very interesting. Uh, they were also very relevant for the time period that we are in. Uh, that was one of the drives for me to actually pursue the, the LLM, which by the way, was the corporate and commercial law program, a taught program. Um, so that, you know, it also assists me to keep abreast of the current state of the law. And I think that um, the facilitators helped tremendously in achieving that. Of course, entirely very approachable and um, they do not hesitate to engage you at a very high intellectual level insofar as the development of the law um, is concerned or on a particular topic or whatever it is that it that it might be. Um, even though I was enrolled under the corporate and commercial law LLM course, what I really liked was the ability to tap into another specialist area of the law. Um, and so I actually pursued a course in public law, which is tremendously beneficial to me now in my practice um, as an attorney at law. And so I really like that. Um, I really like the ability to, to, to experience that and pursue uh, my studies from that wide or broad perspective. Um, of course, why the UE in the first place? I mean, UE is perhaps um, the number one Caribbean university that is ranked among the best in the world. And, and so that in itself was a selling point for me. Um, but also it was very important for me to have Caribbean perspectives um, in my areas of practice. And so the University of the West Indies was perhaps the best place to go in order to get or to fulfill that, that craving um, in terms of higher education under the law. And of course, I mean, I, I have to also talk about affordability. Uh, certainly it was more affordable than any, um, any other university or many other universities that are reputable um, in other places in the world. Um, you know, Certainly, in terms of my career, uh, just my the, the 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 skills that I would have earned having pursued um, some of these courses, which really had a, a a large research element, is um definitely very helpful professionally. Um, I'm in private practice as an attorney at law, and certainly I do believe that it would assist in any area at all of the law that you're working in, whether private or public, um, whether in a law firm, in-house counsel, or just uh, ad hoc consultancies, whatever it is. Uh, certainly a very pleasant experience. The faculty, staff, admin staff, everybody. Everybody is nice <laughs> and 
and very pleasant. It was a very enjoyable experience and I would recommend it to anyone. Thanks. Thank you so much, Craig. Um, Prof. Roy, back to you. Thank you very much, Celia and Craig. Craig, nice to meet you. We've spoken many times, but it's the first time we're meeting online. So we're going to have our last faculty, the Faculty of Social Sciences, and we have Sandra Latibidier, and she's going to make a presentation, and then we're going to have a testimonial. And Carmel, after that, we'll have the testimonial by Sandrine, who I hear is online. So good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Sandra Latibodier, and I'm a lecturer in the Faculty of Social Sciences. So you're thinking about applying to, do, to graduate school. A graduate education is important as it provides students with more advanced learning and in-depth understanding in a specialized discipline, such that at the end of your program, you become something of an expert in your area of study. The Faculty of Social Sciences stands ready to welcome and support you on your next phase of your academic journey of lifelong professional formation and development through the many graduate programs offered by the departments in the faculty. The departments within the Faculty of Social Sciences offering graduate programs are the Department of Economics, the Department of Government, Department of Sociology, Psychology and Social Work, Mona School of Business and Management, and the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute. In the Department of Economics, they offer a, a MSc in Economics. This degree is highly sought after as many employers, including the Bank of Jamaica, the Planning Institute of Jamaica, regulator agencies such as the Office of Utilities Regulations and the Fair Trading Commission have instituted a minimum requirement of, a, of an MSc in Economics for employment as an economist. In the Department of Government, the graduate programs offered are a MSc in International Public and Development Management, MSc in Government with spe specialization in international relations or political theory, compar comparative po politics, a MSc in Politics and International Cooperation, a Master of Philosophy in Government, and a Doctorate of Philosophy in Government. And there are many possibilities for graduates of this program, some of which are a career in an international technical bureaucracy, such as the UN, World Bank, IMF, WTO, or regional organizations, where graduates can um, function in areas such as policy analysis, project management, program coordination and advocacy, or a career in government and diplomacy. In the Department of Sociology, Psychology, and Social Work, we offer the um, MSCs, well, graduate programs in MSc in Sociology, Specialization in Anthropology and Demography. Graduates of this program have a competitive advantage in social research. They are exposed to solid fieldwork in qualitative, integrated, and participatory methodologies. We also have the MSc in Applied Psychology, which is designed on the science practitioner model. It prepares graduates for research, policy analysis, intervention, and consulting in various settings, such as government agencies and industrial organizations. The MSc in Clinical Psychology prepares students to diagnose and define problems through psychological assessment and measurement and help them to formulate and implement intervention strategies. The Master of Social Work, which is a program that is aligned with the voluntary global standards developed by the International Associations of Schools of Social Work, the IASSW, of which a social work unit at UEMONA is a member. The program has two areas of concentration, direct social work practice and social administration and development practice. It is designed to produce graduates who are capable of providing therapeutic interventions, providing leadership to service agencies and professional or civic organizations, and working in communities, hospitals, schools, and other social services serving children and families. Then we have the MSc in Human Resource Development. It's a world-class training program that prepares graduates who are strategic and who can lead organizational and societal change critical for sustaining and growing the 21st century um, organizations. Then we have the Mona School of Business and Management, and they offer um, MSc in Accounting, Master in Business Administration, MSc in Computer-Based Management Information Systems, MSc in Corporate Finance, 
MSc Enterprise Risk Management, MSc in Logistics and Supply Chain Management, MSc in Marketing and Data Analytics, MSc in National Security and Strategic Studies, MSc in Procurement Management, and a doctorate in Business Administration. And students are trained in, in the um, AMBO accreditation, which is an, the Association of MBA accreditation. And the program provides students with the opportunity to gain real life experience, interact with business, businesses, and to be educated by world-class lecturers from the industry and academia. And last but not, not least, we have the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute of Social and Economic Studies, Salesis. They offer MSc in Development Studies, the program is designed to produce graduates with specialized leadership skills for development and an interdisciplinary grasp of the social sciences. The program has three areas of concentration, social, social development, social development policy, economic development policy, governance, and public policy. And these are our contact information. And I thank you and I invite um, one of our graduates from, from our program, Ms. Rachelie Gonzalez Bennett, to give you a testimonial of, of her experience in our program. Thank you. All protocols observed. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So, so my name is Rashima Gonzalez Bennett, and I'm the HOD for Organization Development and Performance Management at Induja Global Solution. My course of study was in human resource development, which was, was just explained to you. So I'm gonna give you some overview as to how this program was for me. What stood out for me was that we had Miss Olivine Thompson as our um, organizer, right? She's a course coordinator. We refer to her as OMT and she was like a mother to us. She was always there. She communicated everything that we needed to know on time on a daily basis. So you can always look out for an email from Olivine who will be providing you with guidelines on what it is that you need to get done and when, when it is that you are to get it done, right? If there were any issues that um, we communicated to her, she would take no hesitation in getting a resolve. And I found that that for me, was comforting to know that there was someone in the department that was looking out for us as we went through the program. We also had a good course representative. That person kept us abreast of everything that was happening in the course. She um, allowed us, she reminded us of the deadlines for every group work, every coursework, every assignment, even though our individual papers. Like we created a WhatsApp group and within that group, we communicated almost everything. That WhatsApp group is still active today. And, and we would use it to share books, articles, white papers that we would need to complete our coursework just to make the work a little lighter. At the end of the day, we had a community. And that community, for me, currently is our network of HR people. And if you're in HR, networking is very important because it helps you to get the work done. Because you can lean on these people. In my current role, I lean on the I, I lean on them, my I call them my brothers and sisters. Um, for guidance when I'm completing my work here. A good example of what's happening in our group right now, even though the group is still active, uh, the other day when we had the, the newly enacted Sexual Harassment Act, which was passed, it was shared in our group prior to it being publicized. And we were able to go through, we had discussions among ourselves, you know, areas of it so that persons could understood, understand what this meant and how it will impact our organization. Our, our lecturers, I will tell you, they were very accessible and supportive. We didn't feel constrained, you know, to reach out to them at any time to seek clarification on any area of study that we were completing. If, if it is that we needed um, them to be discretionate in, you know, changing a deadline for a submission of an assignment or so forth. Once we put our arguments up, um, forward, they were they were very discretionate. They would allow that. So the flexibility of being able to speak to people who listen to you and allow you to, um, you know, be your true self was there. Now, people always ask, what are the opportunities after completing a master's? You know, what opportunities are there for you? I can tell you for this program, 
almost every module that is completed is aligned to a role in HR. So we did training, design, and delivery. That will allow someone to be a training manager in an organization. The person can also be a learning and development manager, uh, organization development manager like myself. There are so many aspects of it that you can take from the program and apply to your real job. Uh, another course done would be job analysis and staffing. If you are looking to be a recruiter or you want to be a consultant or you like to do a job evaluation, this course teaches you the competent, gives you the competencies that you need to get it done. Similarly, there was a course on small business. A lot of persons want to become business owners. This course allows persons the ability to be able to write their business plan. And that business plan is evaluated by persons who are in business because on different days when we had classes, different managers from different organizations or business owners will come to class to give their testimonials and will evaluate the work that we do. So we are getting the real life experience from them and we can apply that when we want to do our own business. There are other areas for example, one of my favorite courses was organization design and intervention. For that course, we were allowed to go in an organization, identify a gap, then create an intervention plan that can use to close that gap. For me, that was very special because we chose a primary school. And what we did in that primary school was something that came to life where we were able to make changes within the primary school just from participating in this program. So there are a number of benefits and jobs available for persons who complete this course. We have, you can be a compensation and benefits okay, manager. Rashima, I can tell what you're excited when you would go on all evening. <laughs> I'm, I'm wrapping up. I know I was given only three minutes. <laughs> um, you know, you can be a compensation and benefits manager. So why do the course? I will say the number one reason to do this course in HRD is the relevance that it brings practical application to your current life. You are able to apply the knowledge that you're getting to what you're actually doing in your workplace. That's the reason. That's the number one reason for doing this course for me, right? So in concluding, I would not, I would recommend anybody, anybody to do this course. I was never in HR. I didn't do my first degree in HR and I don't regret doing my master's in HRD. Okay, thank you very much. I can tell that you're excited. It's so good to hear. So we're going to have our last testimonial by Sandrine because I hear that Sandrine is online. Sandrine, please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So I am a proud graduate of the Faculty of Humanities and Education, and I don't think I would have it any other way. Um, I came into the faculty not being certain of what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure of the direction I wanted to take. Um, I was juggling between journalism and maybe law and maybe history. I wasn't sure. But I decided to settle on this faculty. And it has been one of the better decisions I've made in my academic life and also my professional life. It has given me a strong foundation to work on a number of platforms. I mean, probably the only areas I would be able to function on right now would be maybe surgery or chemistry. But in any other area, I'm able to function properly, I'm able to perform and sometimes ex exceed expectation. As a creative mind with skilled hands, it was difficult for me to decide where to go and why to decide why I should focus on the humanities. But then, um, having gone through some of the skills that I had, I thought it would be a good combination if I chose the humanities and combined it with those skills. So, after the first year in FHE, I realized I had no regrets about the programs I was doing. I was looking for a sense of identity, um, a sense of understanding who I was, where I came from, and how that would contribute to the future of myself, my country, and my, the global development, if I could contribute to that in, in, in any significant way. 
And so I looked at some of my colleagues who had gone into banking and finance. Some of them had gone into computer and graphics. I just thought, why should I leave? So for myself, one of the ben some of the benefits that I've had as a result of choosing to do a degree in the FHE has been that my communication skills improved significantly. And um, I mean, once you get over the stage fright, it gets better. There is the written and the, the spoken aspect of communication, but there's also the human interaction aspect that we often ignore. And that was honed over here. So I was able to communicate with people formally, but also informally. And that affects you in areas like if you choose to do journalism, for example, or media and communications, not everyone responds to you the same way. Not everybody talks to you the same way. And so it, it gives you that flexibility and adaptability. Time management was good for me um, because I never had that at all, but I was able to also express my creativity within the space and that was important for me. Um, I had the cultural and social awareness that I needed and emotional intelligence came to the fore. Um, there was also this awareness that what we were doing in the future would be connected to decisions made in the present and the past. And so that was important for me as well. And therefore I found that this faculty would have been my best option. As for the lecturers, that was an awesome part of the package for me because interaction was really important for me. It has always been, it continues to be important, that human element. And if you, if you leave this faculty and you're not known, it is because you chose not to be known because the lecturers make themselves available. And sometimes I think they overextend themselves. Having gotten close to some of them, I, I've seen some calls coming at some various hours and they take them. And I wonder why, but I, I've always realized that it's just their caring nature. So that has been good. And that is one of the reasons I would encourage anybody to come and do programs within this faculty. Um, as for the opportunities, opportunities for networking are great. Um, my earliest experience networking at all was when I was pushed into some academic conferences um, by my then lecturers. Um, didn't know what to do then, but I enjoyed it. I learned from it and I grew through it. And if they are able to see that raw talent that you don't realize that is there and are able to harness, I guarantee you that they will find it. They will see it and they will push you to, to, to mold that talent. Um, uh, trust me, I have gone through it with, with, with my lecturers and I appreciate it very, very much. And even if you don't know where you want to go, I mean, once they see the talent, once you make your talent known, you don't necessarily know your path, but you know you have certain capabilities and you don't bear that talent. You don't hide it under a bushel. I guarantee you that the lecturers here, the lecturers will definitely help you to find that way. Um, they help you to meet the movers and shakers in different spaces. And that helps you to connect with a, a family that you can have after having completed your studies. And if you're an extrovert or a part-time extrovert, like myself, um, it works for you too, because you're able to use the information that you get here. You're able to use the foundation that you get here to create your own ways and to make your own connections. I was able to make connections in, in um, public and private sector because one, I was fearlessly outspoken, but not only that, when I came here and I started to develop a sense of, of self and identity, um, I had lecturers who supported me and showed me how to be outspoken without being abrasive or being too aggressive. So that was helpful. And that pushed me into media. Um, I've done TV, radio, and print. I tell people I've done everything in, in uh, media except accounting because I've only done a budget for an event. I've planned major festivals. I've done engineering. Um, I've worked on behavior change campaigns. I've done PR for private and um, public sector. I've okay, done private Sandrine, consultation. See that there are no limit to what you can do. And that's my point. There is no limit to what you can do with a degree from the Faculty of, of Humanities and Education. So I want to encourage people to just come over and get into our, our, um, into our graduate programs. Because, you know, we are in demand out there. I've heard the commendations. They love us. So I would encourage anybody to come and take advantage of them. Trust me, it helps you to become well-rounded. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandrine. But you're standing between us and SLV. And yesterday we had a session and SLV got the most questions. So I'm going to invite Siobhan Harvey to come on and tell us how we can fund our graduate dreams. Then we're going to hear from the credit union and JMMB. Yeah. 
Good night. Good afternoon. Good night, everyone. Can everybody hear me? We're hearing you fine. Awesome. Awesome. I must thank the UA team board just to invite us to SLB. We're pretty grateful for the opportunity just to come and share our products and services here with the students. It's truly a privilege. Okay, so my name is Siobhan Harvey. I forgot that I have the, the video camera right here. My name is Siobhan Harvey, and I'm from the Students Loan Bureau where I work as a customer service representative, you know, and uh, where I'm seeing here, let's let's begin. We don't know further though. I won't, I won't take you long. I won't take long at all, so let's begin. So we're the Students Loan Bureau, and what we do is provide tuition funding for persons, Jamaican nationals who are in need of tertiary level education, who are in need of financial support, who wants to pursue their dreams and their goals in whatever course or program that UA is really offering. Okay. Now, as it relates to our products and services, we have three loan products and services. The first one is a targeted loan, which is an undergraduate loan. The second is a pays loan facility, which means that you pay while you're attending school. So for the targeted loan, you repay that after you've completed your program of study. For the pays loan, you repay while you're attending school. Now, the third one is a postgraduate loan facility, and this is one that we're going to zero in on tonight. Okay, so for this loan facility, this loan, well, this loan solution is created for persons who are professionally who are professionals, employed professionals pursuing graduate studies. And uh, what we do, what this does is really covers for funding for post diploma, master's and doctorate degree programs. You can access up to 1.8 million per academic year. Payments are also facilitated via salary. Only one principal borrower is required, one guarantor is required, the interest rate is 9.5. I'm not, I'm, I can see that it's not reflecting there, but it's 9.5% per annum, and that's pretty low in comparison to other institutions that are providing financial institute, financial solutions. Okay, also how to apply for this postgraduate loan. Okay, so the first step is for you to visit our website at www.slbja.com. That's www.slbja.com. You would visit our website and you would see apply online. And that would be at the top of our page. You select apply online slash the customer portal, access our customer portals, register slash sign up. Okay. And complete the registration process with an active email address and a mobile number. Okay. Now, how to apply? Step two a one time password, which is an OTP, will be sent to your email address and mobile number when completing the registration process. After completing the registration process by logging in and entering your credentials, creating a password that is with your credentials on the landing page, you'll be required to select the new loan tab and then select the loan type you desire, which would have been the postgraduate loan. Or if you're interested in a page as well for persons who are pursuing, I'm not sure if anyone is here pursuing their first degree, but for persons who are pers pursuing their po are interested in the master's program, you would select the postgraduate loan. Okay. You'll be required to complete the online application and upload the relevant documents from there on. Now, step three. Now, this is for the guarantors. Okay, your guarantor is also required to register and complete the guarantor process on the customer portal. Similar to how you would complete the registration process, create a password, verify your TRN email address, and so on. The guarantor is also required to register with the same email address that you input in your application for them. Afterwards, they will log in with their credentials. Select guarantee alone at the dashboard there where they will be able to see resume and track application apply. They would select guarantee alone. Your loan commitment number should pop up there. They will be able to select your loan commitment number, complete the application, upload the relevant documents, and so on. Step four, pay your fees via customer portal at any of our payment for our any at, at of our payment facilities. Okay. Now we do encourage customers or applicants to make payments via our customer portal because payments will take three at least 24 to 48 hours to reflect. Now that's a very quick, quick time. Okay. If you make payments at Bill Express, it may take a longer time to reflect, which is at least three to five working days. So we do encourage our customers to make payments via our customer portal. Okay. And that's by logging in with your credentials, 
looking at the dashboard, it should be on your left hand side. At the bottom where it says fees, we're on the same dashboard where you're seeing documentation, resume and track application, guarantee a loan, you should be able to see fees as well. Okay. Now, with regards to the required documents, now while completing the application, you will see that some of these informations are required. For example, your TRN will also need one passport size photograph, which should be certified, a valid governmental issued identification, two letter of recommendation, a letter from your employer confirming your, your occupation, salary, employment tenure, and salary deduction facilitation, which means that your place of employment has to, uh, has to facilitate salary deduction, okay? Also, you will need your last three pay slips as well as your proof of address. Okay, now for persons who do not have a utility bill in their name, you can also access our address verification form via our, our website. That's at www.slbja.com, about us slash resource center. After selecting about us, you will see a drop down box. You select resource center and access the address verification form in that section. There are a list of blank documents there you can access and utilize as well, okay? Now, documents required, of course, I've been through that before. Now, why should one choose SLB? What are the advantages of accessing loans, SLB loans, at the Students Loan Bureau, okay? We offer one of the lowest educational interest rate island-wide one of the lowest educational interest rate island wide. We do not need any collateral. We do not need any land title. We do not need a car, car title. We do not need any of that. We do not need any parcel of land. Okay, no collateral is required. Okay, we offer manageable monthly installments as well. You don't have to worry about anything too expensive or too hard to manage. We offer manageable monthly installments. Okay. Only one guarantor is required. Only one guarantor. It's not three, it's not two, it's only one guarantor that is required. And that's some of the, that's just a few of the advantages of accessing SLB loans. Okay, so what's next? Go ahead and apply. You can visit our website at www.slbja.com. www.slbja.com. Start the application process by selecting apply slash our customer portal and help us help you bridge the gap between your dreams and your reality. We want to help you change you. We want to help you change your family. We want to help you change your community. We want to help you make Jamaica a better Jamaica. We want to help you be a transformation in your community, okay? Now you can contact us today. You can send us an email at info.slbja.com. You should see the information right there. We want to hear from you. You can give us a call. You can send us your queries, your questions. And also, as you would have heard before, in our question and answer section, session that we have later, you can forward all of your questions in the chat. I'll be here just to answer or take any questions that you might have. We have a, a few for a few social media handles. For example, we have we are pretty much on Facebook, we are on Instagram, we're also on Twitter. Okay. For Twitter, it's at Students Loan SLBJA. At, on Instagram, it's Students Loan Bureau. For Facebook, it's Students Loan Bureau as well. We're also on YouTube at Students Loan Bureau No Space. Okay, I'm anticipating all of your questions, guys. Please to send them all in. I'll be. I'm anticipating all of your questions, and I'm really waiting and anticipating just to hear what you guys have to ask. Okay, choose SLB, and that's it for me tonight. For now. Thank you very much, Jav. I'm one of those beneficiaries of the SLB for my undergraduate degree. I didn't come for postgrad. Next, we're going to have Stacey Ann Porter Davis, who is, who is from the Credit Union, who is going to tell us how we can also fund our graduate dreams through the Credit Union. Stacey. Thank you, Professor Roy. Good evening, everyone. And I want to start off by just applauding you for being taking the decision to be a part of the Pelican Talks this evening. And I hope that at the end, the only hesitation you'll have is just which one of these exciting programs to sign up for and not whether you'll be able to afford it or not. As Professor Roy said, my name is Stacey Ann Porter. I am the business development leader at the UE branch of Educom Cooperative Credit Union. 
And I'm here to talk to you a little about how we can help you finance the education. For over 60 years, our commitment, we have been on the campus and our commitment to the students have been to offer loans at low rates to assist in paying the tuition. I myself can be a testimonial about how uh, getting ready for graduate studies, not knowing where the first dime was coming from, and being told by some of the lecturers on campus, Stacy, don't let that stop you, apply. Do the application, get in, it will work out. And so said, so done. When I started my um, MBA, I had no clue where it was coming from. And it, I'm not going to say it magically appeared. We had to be, um, I had to be proactive and you will have to do too. But you are here. I did not have the luxury of this session to say you have these options. So you are here. So let's talk about it. Now, because education is important to us, we do have loans at preferred rates, uh, some as low as 6% um, that you can access to help offset the cost of studying. We also offer a hassle-free payment environment in terms of paying the tuition. You can come in and pay it here at our office on the UA campus. And for those who don't know where we are, you will know once you're a student here because across from us is the old library, which is a prime exam spot. So you will always, we always have a lot of students walking across our um, pathways on their way to exams. So you will find us. The application process is not online yet, like the student loan, but we're working on it. Um, you will need to, once you are a member, you need to provide us with your basic information, employment, proof of address ID, uh, a copy of what your tuition is going to be. And you come in and sit and speak with any one of our experienced loans officers. And again, I want to encourage you, each applicant is unique, each applicant is different, and we try to cater to everyone. So while you will see the basic requirements out there, you come in nonetheless and speak. Don't say, oh, I don't have this, I'm not going to go. And I'm sure it goes across any one of the financial institutions that are presenting here. Uh, to you this evening to come in and start the conversation. You never know where it will lead. All right. For the future graduate who wants to start saving towards their tuition so that they're not ready to, um, you've heard the talks, you're not ready to start the program, but you want to start saving towards the program. We also offer great goal-oriented uh, savings accounts, such as our wealth creator that you can start to help you achieve um, the goal of saving your tuition. Now for our student members too, we also have scholarships. Currently we have over 20 different scholarships available for our tertiary institution, um, for our tertiary members. They can access, typically it's between um, June and July that the applications are open. You are required to be a member for at least a year to apply for that and have a GPA of 3.0 to apply for those scholarships, right? We also have two or ambassador program, which as a member you can sign up for. And what it is, is just simply having your friends and family, telling them about the, the organization, having your friends and family join in so that you can um, earn. Once they become members, we pay you for that, and that's a tax-free income that you'll have there. So you can use that to help set or uh, offset, sorry, one of the courses or two that you do while you are studying here. All right, so that's it in a nutshell, real quickly, um, how the credit union here on campus can help you to take this exciting journey of postgrad studies. 
and and help you to become the person you are always meant to be. You can find us on all the social media platforms. We'll be here to answer any questions that you may have for us later. Um, for those who are on campus, feel free to walk across and come and sit and speak with any one of our officers. We'll be only too happy to help you achieve this goal. Thank you so much and have a great evening. Thank you very much, Stacey. Hold on for the questions because they're going to come, especially about that scholarship. I now will. we have from JMMB, Basil Dyer, who's, who's going to tell us a little bit about products offered by JMMB that can assist your graduate dreams. Basil. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to come on and share with you um, how JMMB, in partnership with the UA, can help you to gift yourself the best gift, I think, which is a sound um, education. And I'm sure you'll agree with me. Is everyone seeing the screen? Yes. JMMB, we're committed to nation building by providing solutions that will help and offer access to, um, to higher levels of education to everybody. We believe that through that we can contribute to the growth of our economy by enhancing our loan offering to make it more accessible to more people. And how, what exactly have we done to, to do this? We've come up with our JMMB graduate loan solution, which is an unsecured loan designed to cover up to 100% of your tuition costs. We offer flexible loan terms of up to seven years. So this helps you to manage your monthly payments. Uh, you have the options of, of taking less time to repay if it is that you desire. Uh, we also offer loan, um, low interest rates or my, we are priced currently at 18.5% per annum as we are a traditional, this is a traditional unsecured loan. And it's still per, at a preferential rate, which is less than our regular unsecured loan rates. We offer low fees as low as 1.5% as well. What are the benefits to persons who want to access this um, product? We offer flexible disbursement, um, which we make directly to the Mona School of Business or whichever faculty. Um, you have the option of paying, paying payment, design your own loan payment. So you pay as you draw down and you have up to three times where you can make a drawdown on your loan principal. But again, we offer the special rates and there are no penalties for early closure or repayment. And what exactly as a salaried individual will do you need in, if it is that you want this, this um, loan product? Well, we ask for the standard stuff. Employment letters, we want to look at um, what your pay slips, your three, about three to six months pay slip. We need bank statements. We need a cost of tuition from UA, um, evidence of any deductions. And we need, most importantly for you to have, a clean credit history. Now, persons, some persons may have had challenges in the past um, and where they've also been denied loans because of their credit history. But don't let that stop still come in and have conversations with us because we can help you um, to correct those issues and see how best we can help you to achieve the goal. If you're self-employed, we want to confirm what your business is by you providing business registration documents. We require an income verification letter. Usually this is issued by a chartered accountant. And if it is that you have internal financial statements, you can provide us with those and or tax returns, which are your yearly filings with the tax office. And we review your bank statements for the last 12 months. And, you know, again, we need to confirm the tuition and also ensure that you have a clean credit history. What we will provide to you when you come to us. In our conversation, we provide, we ensure that we have a, we offer a quick turnaround time in loan processing. We have here at the at our FSA unit, sound financial planning advice, team of expert financial solutions advisors, some of whom are actually graduates of the Mona School of Business. 
We offer tips on how to prepare or increase your possibilities of getting an approval. And most importantly, we're, we're definitely willing to provide the cost to cover the tuition. Now, a typical loan would look, a typical, the typical terms for our loan looks like this, about 2.5 million over seven years at a rate of 18.5%, and you will have an approximate payment of 54,529 monthly. And the minimum salary to qualify for a loan of 2.5 million is approximately 136,000. At least something that is accessible and you're able to um, apply for. Although it is that we primarily speak about um, the loan component of the graduate um, program, it does actually come with a savings option. And this saving options provide us, provide students or applicants with the opportunity to invest and save for yours or your children's educational future. How this works is we try to factor in economic conditions when calculating the true cost of um, education. So that includes what are the costs for books? What are the costs, costs for lunch money? What would you need to ensure that you're having a smooth transition in terms of ensuring that you're getting your uh, proper learning. We help you determine how much you need in the later years. And through conversation and using our finance, we're able to calculate the amount you should invest monthly and by starting now. And through our online portals, you're able to track your progress to determine whether or not you're off track and what it is that you need to do to, be, to get back on track. So you will come in to us and tell us your goals, tell us what timeline you're working on. Um, we will assess your risk tolerance, create the right portfolio for you man and help manage your portfolio and together determine the cost of achieving your, which is to access your education through the Mona School of Business. And here it is. We're at the end of the presentation. That was short and spicy. Yes, thank you very much, Basil. We appreciate that. You are yeah. welcome. Uh, stick around yeah. for questions at the end. Yeah, I'll stick around for questions at the end. So now we are at the question and answer section, and I'm going to invite a Dane Murray from Markham to join me because he's going to be fielding questions. I know that Helen Atkins said that she might have to leave soon. Is Helen still online? So if anybody have any questions for Helen, we'll take those. Um, Siobhan from, from SLB said he won't be able to stay long after 7.30. So if anybody have, if there are any questions or then for SLB, then we will take those first. Or if anybody have any questions for Helen, then we'll take those. All right, thank you, Prof. Roy. I'm searching through, I'm skimming through to see if I see any questions. Most of the questions um, here, I see that the team has been responding Thank to you. So I'm just Excellent. going to open call right now. Um, once the email is sent, will I get confirmation that the offer is accepted? I saw that I think it's a general question and that was answered as well. So we're just gonna make a call right now for persons. Um, this is your opportunity to ask questions directly to the presenters. Um, whether, and this means anyone from faculty, anyone from the graduate studies team, or you can also ask a question directly to our financial institutions that are here with us. But then that means that our faculty administrators who are online and the team from the Office of Graduate Studies and Research have been doing their job and answering all the questions. So that's good. That's great. On the ball, I see a question now, and this I believe this one is for, for humanities. Good evening. Will the TV program be online? Good evening um, again. The TVET program is not yet often online, but what I would suggest is for that person to send us an email at um, maybe carmel.roof at uimona.edu.jm 
because perhaps there is something we can organize for that student or for that potential applicant. Okay, all right, thank you for that. Um, the person from Humanities can just put the contact again in the chat for them to reach out. Uh, I see a question here. As a regional student, pending my acceptance, how does one go about securing boarding? It's talking about accommodation. Can they apply? I guess I guess I don't know, Miss Bennett or Pafroy, can they okay. apply? So we so we have several residents for um halls of residence for our postgrad students. So you can go online and you can find that information on our website, or you can email us at postgrad at uwi mona m o n a dot e d u dot j m. And if you have a preference as to where you want accommodation or otherwise, we can send your information to the different residents and, and, and um, they will contact you directly. So if you don't okay. find the information online, send an email to us at postgrad at uwimona.edu.jm and we'll put you in touch with um, individuals who can assist you in finding um, residents on hold if you're interested in that. All right, so these are, I, I wanna give two questions. These are for humanities education in particular. What's the mode of delivery for the masters in educational psychology? One, two, when will the MA in educational leadership and management be online for part-time students? Will, will, not when, will the MA be online? So the, I'll take the last one first, Odin. The educational leadership and management program is offered in face-to-face -face as well as online. So we have that already. I'm not sure if that is the question that needs to be asked. So because that program is already online. Regarding the... Educational psychology. It, educational psychology at the moment is face to face. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you, Carmel. Thank you for that. What was the mode for the masters in sociology for this academic year? What's the mode of delivery? Ms. Latiba there? Face to face. We have, we've actually gone back face to face for all our programs. The face to face the for faculty. the faculty. Mm -hmm. Sociology. Hi, good evening. Can you say when? I think the person's asking about timetable. Well, I think you'll get your timetable after you've registered for your courses. Right. So I just want to remind all the potential students once you've been accepted on the 31st of August, I think it is GB, we have general orientation. And then on the 1st of September, we have program specific and faculty specific orientation where you will meet with your faculty and your program coordinators and all the information about the course will be sent, will be given to you at that time. If you want information, then you can email the different faculty representatives here or email us at Postgrad and we'll put you in touch with individuals who can provide information if you don't want to wait until the end of August. All right, Pafroy. If you are differing until next year, do, do you have to pay the unrefundable fee? This is the commitment fee. Someone is that? It? Maybe. If you are differing. If you're differing, no, you don't need to pay it. You'll wait until next year when you plan to come in and pay it at that time. Okay, thank you, Bibi. Thank you. Another question for the social sciences. What is the mode of delivery for the International Development and Public Policy Program? Can you give me a moment to check, please? Um, I will check with the no problem. The faculty. Yeah. Okay. And this and corporate finance MSc offered online. So again, that one is for um, social sciences. Teaching begins the first week in September. Correct, Prof. Roy? That is correct, the first week in September. Okay. Um, I see that the person is, the admin team in the chat has been covering regardless. Yeah. Did, we get the, did we get the answer for the corporate finance if it's offered online? 
I think so. When she we're, comes we're going, up, to, we're going to, to, to send the link for the contact person, for the person to reach out to them. Okay. I don't want to give any misinformation. Right. Or you can email us at postgrads and we will, we will answer that one. Remember, we have 270 graduate programs, so there is no way we can keep all of them straight in our heads. We apologize for that. Not being able to answer those two, but send us an email at postgrad at uwimona.edu.jm and we will respond. Okay. Right. So you can go ahead to say all the persons who are asking about the modality can just email the faculty to contact. Right. For yeah, or postgrad, the postgrad email, and we'll get them in touch. Okay. Nothing for, for the funders. I see that the presentations were so good that all the questions were answered. Brilliant. Yesterday we had a lot of questions for the SLV and the credit union. Yeah. All right. I see the persons in the chat. Yes, they're all the questions are being handled in the chat. Okay, excellent. Mm. So we are at 7.30. So if there are no other questions, or if you have questions, you can email us at postgrad at uwimona.edu.jm and we will respond. So um, what's left for me is to thank all the participants. And Odin, I would like to start with Ishmael Preston. Okay, because I forgot about Ishmael yesterday. So he is our IT, he's our IT person and got us all organized and make sure everything flow well. So Ishmael, please, my apology and thank you very much. Odin, you have been super duper. I came to you at Marco and said you needed to help us and you just get your staff in line and you really help to bring this to fruition. So I really appreciate your effort. We will continue to do this. I think it was very successful. Then we want to thank the faculties, Carmel and Diana and Celia and Sandra for all the presentation and to thank all the students for their testimonials. We really appreciate that. Thank Miss Georgia Bennett, who is my right hand and left foot in the Office of Graduate Studies and Research. I don't make any decisions without Miss Bennett. And to thank the, the, admin, the faculty administrators who are online and to thank the graduate reps who are online. And Odin, please, I'm asking you to thank your team at Marcom in helping us to bring this recruiting effort to our graduate students, and we are going to continue to do the same. I also would especially like to thank um, Chev from, from the SLB and Stacy and Basil for all the information that they have presented here because we get those questions all the time about how to fund your graduate degree. And I didn't know that Educom have a scholarship, you know, that our students can apply for. So we're going to get that information and post it on our website. SLB, you don't have any scholarship for our graduate students. I know JMMB used to offer scholarship to our graduate students, and we really appreciate that support. So ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Office of Graduate Studies and Research and Marcom and the faculties and UWI Muna, we want to thank you for participating in this Pelican Talk. And we will have others in the future. If you have any questions for any other presenters and you're not too sure where to send them, please email us at postgrad at uwimona.edu.jm and we will make sure that you get a response in good time. So then, anything else you want to say to close up? Thank you, Addison. Thank you as well so much for partnering with us. And I know this was beneficial to the prospects. And I want to thank all the prospects for tuning in. All right. I think that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good evening. And maybe we'll see you online again in the future. And send your questions. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Thank you for this. You're welcome.